It's Black History Month. Let's talk about some shady, racist-ass white people. Last month, Lizzie Dunn, a 52-year-old white woman from New York, claimed that she was attacked by a woman spraying acid. What most news outlets failed to mention is that Lizzie Dunn told police a black woman had done it, but her story didn't add up. While Dunn clearly has some issues, it turns out she threw acid on her own face. I mean, who does that? There is a real history of white folks tying black people, real or fictional, to their crimes, or using them to serve their agenda. Just two decades earlier, Susan Smith drowned both her kids in a lake in South Carolina. She spent over a week making an emotional appeal on TV to find the black man she accused of stealing her car. Eventually, Homegirl cracked and confessed to sinking her own car. Also this dude, Charles Stewart, shot and killed his pregnant wife to collect life insurance cash. Who did he blame? Not just the black man, but one from a housing project in a sketchy part of town. Well, that was a lie. His brother ratted him out, and Charles killed himself shortly after. Bye, boo. But not all cases involve a non-existent black face. Black people have actually been accused of crimes they didn't commit, and paid the price for it, oftentimes, with their lives. Ever heard of Emmett Till? Emmett Till was 14 years old in 1955. His crime? Whistling at a white woman. Except this woman, Carolyn Bryant, also lied to her husband saying Till grabbed her and verbally assaulted her. Days later, Emmett Till was abducted from his uncle's house, beaten, and shot in the head before being thrown in a river. Photographs of his face garnered national attention because his mother chose to display him in an open casket, despite the heavily mutilated body. She wanted the world to see the reality of racism in America. In the late 1980s, five black and Latino teenagers were convicted of beating and raping a white woman in Central Park. They were framed by the cops and crucified in the press. Donald Trump, then just a pathetic real estate magnate, took out full-page ads in major New York newspapers at the time. Steering public opinion against the Central Park Five, they served years in jail before being exonerated. Emmett Till's killers walked free, and his accuser confessed to lying in 2007. And Donald Trump, till this day, has an issue an apology for helping to ruin five innocent lives. The cowards get away with it because the state is the chief promoter of racist lies. Black people, including Dr. King, were at the forefront of pushing for progressive social welfare programs in the civil rights movement. But when the social movements died down in the mid-70s, Ronald Reagan spearheaded a campaign against welfare, stereotyping its recipients, especially blacks, as scam artists and welfare queens. She used 80 names. 30 addresses, 15 telephone numbers to collect food stamps, social security, and veterans benefits for four non-existent deceased veteran husbands, as well as welfare. Her tax-free cash income alone has been running $150,000 a year. I mean, the man was a horrible actor, but damn the boy can write fiction. Institutionalized racism is so entrenched that in a country where the majority of the poor are white, Black women became the face of poverty. It set off a narrative for future policy that both political parties embraced that affected the poor, both black and white. Most infamously, Bill Clinton, a Democrat, and his disastrous cuts and restrictions on welfare in 1996, laying the foundation for guys like Trump and the Republicans to propose even harsher policy. For capitalists, racism and xenophobia has been the defining characteristic, the most powerful tool of maintaining their power. Divide and conquer, convincing poor whites that poor blacks and Latinos, or convincing whites, blacks, and Latinos that immigrants are the ones draining the economy or stealing jobs, perpetuating a lie that is costing us all our future.